while in school, I did my so-called work experience. You know, when you, for the first time, get exposed to the real adult life of storerooms, heavy lifting and coffee breaks at a shop called Tradition. Tradition. I'm no local historical scholar, but I believe uh, Tradition was the only, or at least one, of very few game stores in Stockholm at the time. They had, to my eyes, metric tons of pewter minis, Magic the Gathering cards raining down from the ceiling, board games, war games, all that stuff. They also, or at least someone working there, had this mini. I have a distinct memory of it being given to me while working in that shop. We're talking mid-90s, something. Eons have passed, and a year ago or so, I found it in a box in the basement. Not long thereafter, my son dipped it in green paint. But after some tense negotiations, doll hostages were taken, Lego police involved, negotiations carried out over wooden toy phones, it's now most probably going to be part of my Stargrave crew. Because, well, this is one rad Mega Man space baboon. Uh, Mega ape, sorry. But what is it really? I have absolutely no idea. This is the unknown mini. Pewter minis very much appreciate a wash in some lukewarm water with washing up liquid in it, and, and then a rinse. I mean, mine got stripped and cleaned up that way, but a new one might still have uh, residues of the molding process, release agent, on them. If it's an older used mini, even if it doesn't need stripping, it might be a good idea to give it a nice bath anyway. 30 years worth of cheese doodle fat dipped fingers isn't great for the coming paint either. A lot of metal miniatures come in parts. Personally, I like to pin the bits together if that's the case, just to make sure said bits won't break off if dropped. This one, being the one solid beast, I only pinned to the base. The metal is actually quite soft and I have no issues drilling holes with my regular little hobby drill thing. Priming a metal miniature. Well, I'm sure there's tips and tricks for extra certain ways of making sure the primer grabs well to the metal surface, I'd say cleaning it first is a major point. But I've had no issues so far with using the regular surface primer from Vallejo. Admittedly, I did drop this ape in my lap just as I finished the priming, uh, rubbing off some of the paint here and there, but having to go over it again in some places. So let's just call it one and a half layers of primer uh, prime job. Not having a real plan with a colour scheme for this miniature, apart from the apparent urge of some rub-it-in-your-face sci-fi vibes and possibly a little bit of retro vibe, I decided, based on this baboon's history and work experience, to do just that. Work experience. Practice stuff while also practicing the art of coffee drinking whilst taking lots of breaks. Well, maybe not taking the breaks bit. Painting a mini is practicing painting a mini. We always learn something, even subconsciously. Stuff like brush control or what paints taste nice. But it's also possible to incorporate techniques that one is not comfortable with to hopefully become more comfortable or at least have a slighter elevated understanding of at the end of the paint job. As a beginner, this could arguably be painting a miniature, period. But stepping out of one's comfort zone can be a great thing. Anyway, so I made a list. Painting white. Getting it darker, further down. Black lining. Airbrush. Oil paints. Transparent paints. So apparently this was going to be a white space armoured ape. I started to do something like a zenithal prime, spraying the miniature mainly from above, or at least from an upward angle to retain some of the black in the recesses. But instead of going straight for a white, I started with a middle grey on the majority of the mini and worked my way up to an almost white on the areas visible from above. White is real tricky for me. I I want that sense that there is light from the imaginary baboon space world sky hitting the miniature from above. So that means there needs to be grey or even black in the places where the sun doesn't shine. This baboon seems to be missing that exaggerated species specific feature by the way anyway tricky a white to gray gradient without everything in the end just looking like gray armor with white highlights i've had this airbrush for a while now but not used it for much more than priming simply put i purposely refrain from using the airbrush because i want to include viewers who do not have access to one this means i'm not learning anyway working on something 
black and white like this was actually nice. Not getting blinded or confused over how thin layers of color mix when airbrushed on top of each other. I could practice getting paint in the right spots and some kind of volume thing going. Admittedly, in the end, it does look pretty much just Zenithal primed. You would have seen that I took some photographs of the Black Mini with my iPhone, lit with a light straight from above. This to give me a little bit of reference on how imaginary skylight would hit the Mini. I didn't reference this as much as I should have, but it did get the odd Google during the painting process. I blocked out the other color elements on the Mini with transparent paints to give them another color, uh, but still retain a bit of depth that my airbrush work had put into play, using darker colors, well, I hope they would be darker anyway, of, of what is to come. So that in the perfect world, all I would have to do later is to highlight these parts slightly, without having to fuss about too much. Yeah, I kind of forgot who was doing the painting there for a sec. Then it was time to black line. At least that's what I think this is. We throw so many terminology words around in this hobby. It's like walking across a tennis court. But what I want to do is paint a thin black line down every dividing edge, down every crevice, as if I would have used a black wash, but it only ends up as a thin line and not just a completely gray ape. Black lining to enhance the contrast, details and just overall visibility. I've never done it before. And choosing to do it the same day as I was also practicing to drink lots of coffee was perhaps an unwise decision. Pro tip from the non-pro, don't drink strong coffee on an empty stomach whilst black lining. Now, these lines don't really have to be black, maybe especially not on a white mini. I mean, we do whatever we want, right? And, And then decide if we like it. I liked this, because for some reason those shaky, thick black lines kind of gave all this, to me, a bit of a retro feel. I can see, though, with a bit of practice, that this is very useful stuff in a probably more delicate setting. Now, I don't use transparent paint much, but I would kind of like to. The golden transparent paints previously applied undiluted really did an intense colorful job. But I also wanted to do some more subtle work on the white armor. I grabbed some of uh, Scale Colors instant paints for this, a contrast style paint to add a more subtle shading but also some hints of color. Sort of smear on some paint, you know, get it where it's supposed to go, quickly dip the brush in water, wipe it off a bit and then smear out the paint into a gradient. With the help of that little water in the brush, pushing the pigment into the darker area where I want it, leaving behind the white highlighted armor relatively unstained. After that bit of character had been added, I started to highlight the white, using a thin white paint with a little amount of grey in it, not only adding edge style highlights, but also cleaning up a bit of the out of control black lining. The remaining sci-fi colors, orange and, well, blue, I just tried to not get paint in the recesses and leave the more shaded areas alone so that my orange would get a reddish shade and so on. While adding these colors, I figured the white could be highlighted just a little more. In my opinion, a great reason to jump back and forth, building up the mini in stages and not finishing off the one little bit at a time. Because this means seeing everything grow and being able to respond to what's happening. So I did some very delicate edge highlighting with a thicker white paint than the one used previously. Still a tad of grey in there though. I think by now I'd had something to eat because the brush was doing less involuntary jerky moves. Still not convinced on whether the white armor was shaded enough lower down on the mini, I tried to do a sort of reversed zenithal prime with a heavily diluted transparent grey paint. Turning the mini upside down, trying to just hit the lower parts. Again, in a way, forcing myself to use the airbrush as the tool it actually is. This effect was delicate and I didn't really dare use it too heavily. My lovely white highlights would have had my head on a platter if splattered with specks of grey. But this move did make me bring forth the airbrush. Why not use it to make the Mega Man, uh, I mean a weaponized arm, glow? This was one of those times where I got the dilution bit wrong. Getting splatter, trying real hard to cover that up while still retaining a feel of glow. And then, when stepping back, looking at the whole thing, I realized I'd also sprayed the leg. This was not intentional. The small glow became a large glow. So instead of the subtle, darker glow I was going for, I now knew I had to highlight the center plasma coil style bit quite a lot so that the spread of the glow wouldn't feel too out of place. This I did with a regular brush. 
also trying to hit the surfaces facing the light source to enhance the glow vibe, working my way closer and closer to the light source with brighter and brighter paints. I then highlighted the other details on the mini tubes and that orange, only brightening the upper reaches, the surfaces facing upwards, trying to achieve some sort of gradient. A thing with orange, something I like to do as a final step is to edge highlight with the thin white and then go back over that white with a thin down orange. The white layer underneath really helps the orange say, hey, look over here, I'm, I'm a bright orange highlight. The sword was just a confused frenzy. I'm always very ambivalent when it comes to future world swords. I mean, hey, I got this awesome plasma gun operated into my arm, but better take a sword for good measure. I mean, what does it do when it needs to pick something up? L leave the sword behind? All these questions. But me being ambivalent is actually based on, well, what is a future sword made of? Is it like a lightsaber? Is it an old metallic relic? So I never know how to paint them. And that usually results in me just adding paint until someone tells me to stop. And that was the last touches of acrylic paint. But I still had the oil paints unchecked on my list. I gave the ape a layer of varnish. This is not totally necessary, but because I'm working with a white layer, I just wanted to make sure I was not going to get it stained. Most oftenly when working with oil paints, I start by putting them out on a scrap piece of cardboard. The cardboard will soak up some of the oil in the paint, mainly resulting in shorter drying times. White spirit, in some form, odorless is a thing I prefer, is necessary not only to thin the paint but also to clean one's brush. For me, one big reason to use oil paint like this on an almost finished miniature is in a way the step back in the change in painting style. I tend to paint with oils using a subtractive method. I add too much and then with the help of a cleaned off brush still with some fumes of white spirit on it, remove excess. Because of the nature of the paint in combination with white spirit, gradients are just so easy to achieve. This leads to me starting to shade, adding substance and sometimes color to the shaded places. With acrylic paints, I'm always working towards the highlight going brighter and brighter. With oils, they naturally make me do the opposite. The combination of these two is very satisfying. I did, however, do some final white highlights with oils. Still an ounce of gray mixed in, white oil paint is very potent and bright. The ability to be able to just smear on some paint and then with relative ease create a smooth gradient using a clean brush with some white spirit fumes on is pretty astounding, especially on the smooth curve of a shoulder pad. Because I had all the oils out, I thought I might as well just paint the base with these oils. Wanting to make sure there was lots of black in the recesses, I covered the whole base with black oil paint and then spent about 20 minutes trying to get anything else I put on there to not become black. In the end, I was literally scooping off thick layers of almost black paint from the base. I kind of managed to get some tonal variations in there, but lesson learned. The then simple problem solver to get some brighter tones on the base was to add dry pigment powders, just dumping some of the concrete gray dust and some orange rust on there to make things a little more interesting, resting softly on the still drying oil paint. Now back to the fact that this is a metallic miniature. If one intends to game with a painted metallic mini, I would strongly recommend sturdy varnishing. If dropped or handled with less care, the paint does come off easier than on plastic miniatures, and a shiny metallic scratch is more visible than a dull grey one. Glossy varnish is the most durable. I'm no huge fan of glossy. So what I do is spray on glossy polyurethane varnish and once that is dry I spray on matte varnish for aesthetic purposes. Although I haven't yet because my old paint base is still drying. I had fun painting this wonderful ape. I still want to keep all the things on my work experience list, maybe apart from the lots of coffee bit. But most importantly, I still very much would like to know what mini this is. Please, if you have any idea, let me know. As always, a great thank you to all my patrons. Thank you. Bye.